Welcome to a comic shop. A comic shop is a CBGB of comic stores. We're small on the outside, but big on the inside, kind of like the TARDIS. That's a Doctor Who reference, if you guys don't know what that is. So we see ourselves as selling entertainment. We're not all about just comics. It's about all the pop culture. A comic shop is a movement. We're nominated for best comic shop in the world, and it's fantastic. What we do is badass. Oh. We're a great team. We're like the Fantastic Four. We want to change the industry. My name's Aaron Holland. Hey, baby, come on and preach some comics. I'm co owner of this store. Aaron forgot to give prizes to the first 30 people who walked in. I made an executive decision, and I'm an executive. And executives are cool now, thanks to Obama. I find it ignorant and childish. Superman was created by Jews. He was their former messiah. What if they named him Messiah Man? <laughs> I love poking fun at stereotypes. Everything he does is for the laughs. I'm not going to stop laughing at ethnic differences just because I'm white. That would be racist. Aaron's tactic, sense of humor, it works. <laughs> Friends insult each other all the time. What kind of guy has a beeper in 2010? A drug dealer. He has a insulin pump. You know what? Every group of friends has a He's on Earth. As long as there's nothing mean-spirited and you're just trying to lighten the mood, then that's fun and everyone can enjoy it. My name is Jason Blanchard. I'm the co-owner of a comic shop and my job is to get people in the door. Jason keeps us, like, out of trouble with the law. He's like, don't forget to ID people. Uh, I'm gonna do the taxes. So here's the problem. The work ethic of last week sucked. When Jason's stressed, he takes it out in the worst way possible. I am completely beyond stressed. He thinks, like, worrying is being introspective. Being introspective is searching your soul, doing that little thing where, you know, black guys walk around and think about stuff, you know, and there's like some kind of montage, sometimes like R&B music in the background. That's introspection. I'm Triforce Mike, and I guess I'm the wild card. I I'm Murdoch. Yeah. Oh, you're so romantic. And you're so crazy, fool. Yeah. Mike is a perverted Forrest Gump. Mike will always come up and touch your butt. It's like you got them. <laughs> It's like an instrument. And something you get in there, you can get it underneath even. People expect the craziness from me. He's totally off his rocker. He has no ambition whatsoever. This sh he just loves comics. And I guess it's good to have a right-hand man that has no ambition. That's what Megatron did wrong. He had Starscream. It's like, every time you turn around, he's trying to stab you in the back. Nobody turns his back on me! There's a policy against Mike getting naked because he has an abnormally large penis for a white man. I love my dog and I want to show everyone. And so that's Mike. Triforce Mike. I love you, Triforce Mike. Triforce when I play gay chicken, everyone wins. <laughs> Triforce Mike. I'm Eric, I'm a manager of a comic shop. I get to talk about superheroes all day. I'm the luckiest man in the world. Except working with Aaron. Yes, Eric. Yeah. I want a yeah. pink shirt to mm -mm. see a comic shop with a little red. No. <laughs> I don't understand why gay guys even like comics. I can get really gay and say they have fabulous costumes. Oh, I want to be Wonder Woman. He likes a gap in between each transaction. Oh. I'm going to charge you. I'm going to charge you whatever you want. Okay. I got lots of money in this red. Eric is a flirtatious uh, gay man. Yes, I know, honey, I know. You know, he'll be like grabbing my butt and I'll just like lean in and let him you know. <laughs> on my birthday. Jason and Aaron have a definite love-hate relationship. He does so many things that I don't want to do, like math. I hate math. Yeah, one for three or two for five. And I do things that he can't do, like connect with people and be creative. We also have mint at some point if your breath becomes stinky and you would still like to get a girl's attention. Listen to him, I'm trying to have a personality. It's, it's sad. Whatever. He's always super negative, and I'm always awesome. Are you going to do anything tonight? We're not best friends. We're not buddies. They're yeah, like an old gay married couple. All they do is bitch, bitch, bitch. Listen, Jabba, I was right on my way to pay you back. I'll pay you a triple. You're throwing away a fortune. Don't be a fool. <laughs> We've taken on a huge investor. I don't know if we can pay them back, 
Sales dropped dramatically last month, and I spent almost my entire nest egg. God, I hope there's a line of people. And I'm not getting help. And all I'm thinking about is how this thing could fall apart, and it just feels like no one else really gives a shit right now except for me. <laughs> Comic Shop was nominated this year for the Eisner Award for Best Comic Shop in the World. It's like the Oscars of comics. This year we won Best Comic Shop in Orlando, which is our fourth year in a row. The past three years I got number two Big Shot behind Dwight Howard. We were in second place for Best Thing to Do in Orlando, uh, first being Disney World. Hot dog, hot dog. People love us because we throw these great parties. You can have a party without women, but you can't have a party without beer. You could have a birthday party with kids without beer, but who would want to go to it? Our signings aren't your typical, the guy sitting behind the desk and you interact. You have a lot of fun with them and you get to know these characters, which is awesome. We would not be out of the house on Thursday if it wasn't for this. And we're out of the house for comic books. This is the Nerdapalooza pre-party. It's where white people rap, but they don't rap about pimps and hoes because they never actually experienced that. There we go. Well, the reason we do Girls of the Comic Shop is because it's our way of just getting a little bit of attention. It'll be totally hot, great spank bank material, you know, you right click and you save that and you put it in your special masturbation folder. <laughs> the very first shoot we ever did was just really slutty, but we got 500,000 views in a week and people spoofed us and there was blogs out there saying we we're the worst thing that ever happened to comic book stores. So we said, hey, let's keep going with that. This shoot's gonna be a little different because we're not having you wear a costume. Oh, really? Yeah. What's this one then? This one is just being the eek girl. We need to do some panty shots, so make sure you get. No, of course you have to do panty shots! Seriously. What the hell, Jason? It gets weird when Aaron shows up because I have no idea what he's gonna say. Dude, if I was a chick, I would love to do panty shots. Right. Like, oh, I'm not a. A lot of these kids never even picked up a comedy. And they come in here and we hook them on like drugs. They come back and they're like... The comic shop is trying to make sure that the same people out there that watch the movies, watch the TV shows, actually pick up a comic book and say, you know what? This is pretty damn good, too. Comic shop is like a dot, but our presence is the globe. We are four guys having fun, coming together completely ignorant about business, and we're selling pop culture better than anyone. I don't think we would be nearly as successful as we are without each other. We are the all-stars. We're a family, whether we like it or not. Mike is the wild card, I'm the brains, Aaron's the looks, and Eric is the muscle. And when all four of us come together, there's nothing that we can't do. 